Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, and welcome to the SFL Podcast, presented to you exclusively by APM Music through the power of YouTube. Oh, I also forgot to just power through fuel, because fuel's just great for everything, especially with G Fuel. Darn it, there's, there's, and there goes my, fa- my face playing them. <laughs> okay, you know, come on, let's not use the stock sound effect here, Ryan. <laughs> Today, folks, it's only Ryan and I. We're, we're, we're heading in. We're going guns a-blazing. We are totally lazing on our couches right now. It's, it's great. It's yeah, a great we, time. We're, we're, we're a little short-staffed. We got, we got our holiday that just came up, and so a couple guys just couldn't make it. So we promised you guys yeah. a podcast, so here we are. Yeah, then also they said podcast or riot. Yeah, right. Um, and I don't like riots. They're really messy. They usually are. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I was about to say, like, were you trying to give me an example of a clean riot? No, not really. I mean, I, I can't think of one ever, really. I mean, riots are usually known for violence. I mean, peaceful walks were a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, oh, boy, ever since the championship game happened, uh, there have been some things that happened in the SFL. First off, there was conference realignment, and to give you a brief run through the conference, there's one conference that has 21 teams, mm-hmm. and there's no other conferences. It, it's, a, so, it's one conference of 21 teams, and the other conference is league staff saying, ha, 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 duke it out. <laughs> no, it was just Cam just sitting there laughing after the greatest troll job in SFL history. <laughs> He's like, they think there's going to be more conferences. Look at what they're going to walk right into. I think I knew that something was up when uh, St. Louis was announced to be in the same conference as Mexico City. Because when I heard (laughs) Mexico City and Queen City, I was assuming it was going to be like a tiered system, like soccer. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes St. Louis. And I'm like, okay, throw that idea out the window. (laughs) Did, did, Did Cam get some of Ray Bentley's stuff? I mean, um, I, it's possible, but you know, so, but yeah, no, it just, I was actually expecting the same kind of thing where I was expecting kind of 21 teams, seven teams in conference like we did, but kind of like a tiered system um, based on records for last, from last season. And then um, you'd have a, a relegating team and then you have a promoting team uh, based on finishes within their each conference. I could see how it could rub people the wrong way if they're initially put into the lower conference. Um, so I think this kind of eliminates that for the most part. And then uh, the way the schedule is going to be run, it looks like, is we're, we're going to have a lot of teams still playing within what would have been that tiered conference outside of like a game or two. Um, yeah. And so it looks like this it should be a pretty competitive season. I know it's been a contentious thing among quite a few teams with the schedules. Um, being unhappy with theirs, feeling like they're feeling like, like they got the, the the short end of the stick there. Um, but if you if you look at it, I feel Kamish did a really good job of keeping everything pretty balanced, um, giving everybody as good a, as competitive as a, as a schedule as he could get. Um, and I mean, in, in a league like this, it's kind of hard where you have a couple of clear cut above the rest teams, and then there's a huge muddling of teams in the middle, and then there's a couple bottom end teams that just it makes it hard then to, to make a schedule, and then there, well, then there's Dallas and St. Louis. <laughs> no, I think St. Louis at this point is essentially their own thing. I, but yeah, yeah, I can I can see where you're going with that. Yeah, it, it, that's the thing though about um, kind of doing this. I think that also Cam was just getting tired of having to figure out how to geographically organize everything. Yeah, the SFL, like the way it's set up geographically speaking. It's a nightmare to work with. Like, yeah, trying... there's there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of East Coast and Central teams, and so there's not a huge number of West Coast. Um, it makes it a little more difficult, um, and especially when you have teams like Mexico City. I could consider them West Coast. Um, they're they are kind of more towards the middle of the country of the, uh, okay, the middle of like the United States if you're considering that. Um, cause they are on the more on the right side of it. 
Um, but it's one of those things where you kind of kind of figure out a balance of it. And it, it, with if you if I had the map, I'd pop it up on the screen for you guys. But it's it's a difficult thing to be able to balance out. I mean, there's there's teams all over the place, but there's a majority of them central and east over further basically. Yeah, but that's that's how it is with any league. Um, like if you look at the map for most major professional sports leagues, especially older ones. They're very dense in like the northeast, midwest region yeah. of the United States, except California. I mean, <laughs> we're looking at you, NBA. Why'd you have to put a team in Sacramento? Oh gosh, not even Sacramento. I mean, two teams in LA for football. Uh, there's basically like four teams in every sport in California. Like it's it's the most oversaturated area. I feel. Man, they all suck except well, the Rams and the and the Warriors. Yeah, pretty much. They suck so bad that, that the Raiders are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite. They're doing this weird little tap dance with everything. That's, that's true. They are. They're tap dancing it. It's it's kind of one of the greatest, like one of the most awkward things in sports at the moment, just having to watch the Raiders. Yeah, like you know, play, what? I'm, you I'm, know I'm, they're gonna leave. I'm never. I'm not calling them the the, the Raiders anymore. I'm calling them the Fred Astaire's. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if anybody actually knows that, respect to you for knowing kind of some dance history here. Well, he's more just a cultural icon. Really. I mean, it's true, but not not everybody's heard of him. I'll be honest with that. So, anyways, true. we're gonna we're gonna exclamation true. point DPP ourselves here. <laughs> uh, this conversation is trending off topic, and I can't even remember the rest of the commands, despite the fact that I've been in here for over a year. Um, <laughs> oh man, but you know, apart from that. There have been some signings, okay? And oh, yes. probably the one the, the one team that, at least over the beginning of free agency, has really made some moves is the team from the land up north, the Vancouver Legion, mm-hmm. whereas I'm officially dubbing them the SFL Mean Dream Team. Because over the last two days, they have signed Chris Braun, Levant Irvine, and Mickey Martino, which if mm-hmm. you're in the Discord... You know that those three, they're certainly people. Um, <laughs> they're, they're definitely characters. And then not only that, you got to remember that Tom Pepper moved over there during the offseason to become their GM once more, so he's there as well. Yeah, so basically, um, I remember after the signings that uh, Andy posted, it was basically just gloating and off-topic of all channels about how great the Vancouver locker room was becoming, which is like, you guys are going to get so many disciplinary actions thrown your way. I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if like, half of you have to miss a week of progression. Yeah. I I, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't want to rush it too much just actually to go out flat out say that. Um, I know there are some laps in judgments for a few people. Um, not throwing any names out there. Um, and it's, it, it is what it is. I mean, you, you live and learn. Um, as long as you actually learn from it, if you if you keep making those same mistakes, then there's nothing we can do to help you. So, yeah. Um, but also, like in terms of kind of the real characters of the league getting new homes, Dylan Seal has now become the uh, GM of San, well, co-GM of San Francisco, and has become their third quarterback and actually their fourth quarterback in as in many th- seasons in their three seasons. Yep. No, only three yeah, seasons. Yeah, remember only, had, only, uh, only three. Because yeah, Ahmed Chima left after I think after the first two weeks, um, and then yeah, Rob, Rob but... Roby took over for the last ten, and now he's over in London. And um, I, it's a it's a quarterback. It's like the Cleveland Browns quarterback carousel over there. <laughs> it makes sense, especially considering the fact that it is San Francisco. I mean, hold on, did you see their player openings post? They literally just did a voiceover Pete like mock up. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, honestly. <laughs> I mean, granted, you know what? Good choice of meme. You could have gone worse. You could have gone much worse with your choice of memes. But it's like you threw in even the thing about the credit card number. And look, there are a lot of old men here in the SFL. They don't understand that joke. And so they think that you're trying to scam people. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> It has it has been brought up, um, but it's been smoothed over basically. Let's put it that way, and uh, just 
like I said, gotta watch what you're posting, basically. Someone should tell that to me. Um, <laughs> uh, but apart from that, also, um, a for- another former Shark, Jacques Luyendula, now is heading over to Dallas, Texas, become a Lobo. Mm-hmm. Once again, replacing Shabazz Synergy. He's, it's, he's, it's weird, like, the Dallas Lobos quarterback situation. Like, every other season, they use Shabazz. <laughs> Never just keep him for more than, like, one season at a time. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Season 9, uh, Synergy had, the, I believe, the at least a top 5 uh, season for quarterbacks then. Um, and yeah. then he gets replaced... With Mac Wavy Jr., I believe he was coming in from Baltimore, um, the season that Baltimore missed. Uh, yeah. And then after a few weeks, he 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 disappeared from there. Um, ended up getting cut, and and then you had Mason Kirby coming in. So I mean, it, it's been about the same thing. This was now their fourth quarterback over in Dallas, and in in three seasons. So I mean, I I, I give the Sharks crap, but it, as I think about it, it's the exact same thing happening over in Dallas as well. Yeah, but I think it's really it's more of a different sort of thing with Dallas because it's more just the fact that um, I hate the Sharks more. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, come on. Look, Sharks, I'll stop giving you crap when you stop being such a mean, okay? We good? Okay. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, yeah I mean, they, they got him some weapons over there now, though, over in Dallas. Um, Picked up Tristan Carr um, over from London, who had, I believe, his statistically best season in London last season. Um, yeah. They they re-signed uh, junior, senior three, and I, be- and I believe Mike Osai. I don't know if I saw that one or not pop and up. They also uh, re-signed uh, Mason Kirby. Yep, and they brought back Mason Kirby. Um, and so they, they, they got some weapons over there. Um, I believe they're going to be looking for... I, I believe they're going to be looking for some cornerbacks here in the next few weeks. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that kind of plays out. But yeah, I'm checking the uh, player openings tab to see what uh, they've posted. And they haven't seen a post in a really long time. Um, I remember, like during the playoffs, they had put up a handful of postings. I think I actually answered to one of them because, oh yeah, I was looking at other teams before the off season started. Hey, I can say that now because, well, you know, I'm already confirmed to be with Mexico City for another season. So, mm-hmm. Ramos hasn't murdered you yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. He hasn't sacrificed you to the blood gods yet. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll only leave once I finally beat Slim. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you had your shot. You, you just, you just couldn't do it. Season twelve <laughs> could it be the time? We'll see. I, I love how that's just kind of become like an unintentional rival between rivalry, like just him and I in particular. I'm very disappointed that we don't get to play London this year, so that we don't get that sort of like head to head matchup between uh, Jack and Slynn. Yeah. Uh, all, all. Yeah, as I say, that's pretty much it. I mean, it was Slynn's pretty much, I mean, I can't even say pretty much guaranteed. He's guaranteed to be in London as he became. Uh, co-owner of London with Liam, and uh, so I, I don't, I don't, I feel like he's not really going anywhere. Just, just kind of throwing that out there. Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he just sits there his entire career. But and also, I think location-based, um, I think it just works best it, for him logistically. Yeah. it, it just, it just what... works out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, kind of, kind of living in the area is kind of a no-brainer then. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember where he's. Exa- I think he lives in like Stoke or something. Um, I'm not sure, and I, I don't know if he'd appreciate if we actually said it out on the podcast. <laughs> Just gonna say no, that. <laughs> no, he he said an SFL chat once. Oh, did he? I remember. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where it is. It's but... fair game to us. What? <laughs> I was saying, I'm not sure exactly where it is. I just know he's over there across the pond. Yeah. Um. But but you know, reeling it back in over to this side of the pond. Another team that's been rather concerning on the free agency side of things, or at least just the personnel side of things, is Carolina. Sure, they've acquired Johnny Savage as, uh, I think, their defensive coordinator, but they've lost, like, half their team after their best season ever. Which is honestly one of the strangest things that you could ever see. They've lost, 
Lillian Dula. They lost AJ Francis, which is something that you just never think was going to happen. You know, they seem to be so just kind of well adjusted with each other that that's just not something you think would happen. They also are currently in the hunt for a tight end or fullback, a cornerback, and a strong safety. Yeah. So, I, yeah, it, it's interesting. Um, they, they did have their best season this last season, and there was just, I don't know, I'm not sure what the issue was that caused them all to kind of head out. Um, so, I mean, they, they lost Chappelle, they lost AJ Francis, they lost Louis and Dula. Um, so that's that's three big pieces of the team. I, I don't think it's going to be a, a backbreaker, obviously, Um but it, it is going to be hard to replace them. Uh, the other the other team that I find really really curious about, and I th- I believe I remember hearing about him, might <laughs> might having some some issues outside of the league. Like he he's just been super busy. Is Queen City over there with Eric Barkley, where he hasn't had any time or any or hasn't done any re-signing or anything at the moment. Um, that's been confirmed, I believe. I could be wrong on this. I might have missed one yeah. here. Um, but that that one is one of the ones that I, it really catches my eye as soon as I look at something like that. Where it's, I don't think I've seen, and I mean I've only been here for two seasons now. I don't think I've seen a team not have anybody re-signed or signed in this this much end of free agency already. I think last season, I can't remember if it was like Sioux Falls, Chicago, OKC, or Queen City that was like really late to the gun when it came to. Uh, re-signing and signing everybody. I mean, when it comes to Queen City, I think most of the team is going to re-sign. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, a lot of teams kind of took up the now Queen City free agents and just took a whole swath of players from uh, that Queen City locker room. Ash Odom, I think that he's a prime candidate to leave if given a, if given the offer. Um, there are other players who I don't think that they would leave like you know AJ Caswell I think he's he's a guarantee to stay on uh on Queen City for at least another season or two Achilles Frank another one who's probably going to stay around for a couple more seasons. Oscar Dunkley who is really inactive like I've heard his name a lot, and like the players' statistics and whatnot. Yeah, he's really? he's got a really good player, but he he just hasn't really spoke much. Um, I don't know if he's more of a in the team locker room kind of guy, because um, I know no, there cause... are some teams that are like that. No, because like when I check like the Me Six leaderboard, which I think includes all channels, yeah, he's it, like it... outside of the top. It, it it does include all the channels, so yeah. I mean, if he's not showing up high on that, then yeah, he's just he's just not talking at all. Yeah, no, because like he's outside of the top two hundred, probably only posts like player progression and bit log, and like I know who he, I know that he exists. He's I think he's really good friends with Tom Pepper, and I see him like on his Instagram and whatnot. But it's like I don't know, it's just rather weird. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to workshop in my head here, like just some other teams who. And um, I think either... one that could be surprising, could be considered surprising, is St. Louis picking up uh, Batter Ashlauni from Houston. Um, yeah. Um... I, he he was a really solid number two guy over there, um, and I know he wanted to be the number one guy. Um, and so, I mean, it, it is not 100% surprising to me that he left. I mean, um, anybody wants, a receiver wants to be the number one guy. But I think it's more surprising to me that he went to St. Louis um, and I, he, he could be a really good pickup. I mean, he, he was, he was one of the better receivers, even as a number two guy over in Houston. So I can't wait to see what he does this season for him. Um, yeah. But I think that with the SFL in particular, like the player performance from team to team can change just so much. Uh, I think, cause I think good examples like Levant Irvine, he was, I can't remember his exact statistics in Sioux Falls. He wasn't a bat. He wasn't like, you know, bottom rung linebacker. But when he went to Las Vegas and got the change in um, just coaching and everything, he was like, what, on page six of the leaderboards for tackling? Yeah, something for like line- that. For a linebacker is like ridiculously low. You know, you linebackers usually like dominate page one and two. 
Yeah, no, they, I mean, you almost always see linebackers and possibly like a free safety or strong safety helping more of a run supporting safety as one of the uh, the top guys in tackles. And the, that first page is usually dominated by those those three categories. Yeah, for the most part. Um, but yeah, it's really strange go- going on over there. But St. Louis, I think, they're a team that, again, I don't, I don't quite know about them in particular. They're a very interesting team because here's a fun little fact about them. They're entering now, I think this is their fifth season as an SFL franchise, and they've still never made the playoffs. They're the oldest current franchise to completely miss out on the playoffs. Every yeah, other I, one. I, yeah, I, be, I believe that's correct. I'm not 100% certain, um, but I, I believe that's correct. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've worked it out, and I think, like, out of most of the teams, they're the oldest. Yeah. Um, um, cause, so, go, no, go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. Because yeah, Sharks are younger than them. They've never made the playoffs. Uh, I'm trying to think of other franchises who I know. Technically, London, technically Denver, um, but they're they're just a rebrand, basically. So I mean, you, I don't know how to d- specifically say that. Den- Denver, if we include this, the Caros history, has made the playoffs. Yes, because they went to the playoffs season ten. Yep. Um, but apart from that, really, was was there something else you want to say about the kind of the free agency signings and whatnot? Yeah, and I, so I actually have a question. Um, who would you say? just seeing it who's signed is a person that you find is the most surprising. Has not been signed yet? Most surprising hasn't been signed. I'm currently, uh, checking through. Cause like there are a lot of guys who, um, have been, who haven't been picked up, but I know it's because, you know, more of the fact that they are, uh, that they're more draftees. I just yeah. realized Blake Craze hasn't been picked up by anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's that's true. So he hasn't been. So he's definitely up there. Um, Ashley Finch, although what? she's not really. What I was gonna say. What if I said the letters MVP? Oh, uh, oh, Aniola hasn't been picked up by anybody yet. Jaye Aniola has not signed to a team. <laughs> And there's actually been rumors that he will will not be coming back after an hmm. MVP season, a record-breaking MVP season. Huh. Interesting, now, right? Yeah. I'm trying to remember a few. Yeah, he was on Tallahassee before. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that with him – now, Ranton, what – are, are these sources of these rumors like talking to Eniola directly or is this just like hearsay from talking to like Christian? It's, it's more or less hearsay just based off of um, he hasn't signed to a team. Um, to the best, best of my knowledge, no one's been able to really even get a hold of him. So I don't know if he's just taking a break um, for the time being and will come back. Um, I mean, in just the fact that he hasn't re-signed or even been, even been signed to another team at the moment, Granted, I could be completely wrong, and it just hasn't been announced, um, or hasn't even actually been thrown into a contract just yet. But uh, from what I see, I mean, that has to be one of the most surprising no signings in my in my opinion. Yeah, especially considering the fact that Tallahassee has gotten around to their re-signing. Like they re-signed essentially everyone who they're going to keep for next season. Yep. That's rather interesting. Um, again, although concerning like not being able to get a hold of him, Eniola was already kind of a quiet guy in chat outside of like SFL chat. Yes. Um, I, I don't remember seeing him that often. Like I saw him a couple times, but he isn't like you know a super active guy. Yeah, he's so not, not so much <laughs> super active. Um, I don't know if he's missed any of he had missed any of his progressions when it came time. Um, but I mean, yeah. if he hadn't missed any progressions, then it actually it does make his non-resigning even more surprising in my opinion, um, because he didn't, he was at least there to continue on his progression. Um, yeah, so. uh, but, but, but that's a, but the answer to that question is really only something that Christensen and, uh, Frank would know. Yeah. I mean, Not really. Yeah. And that, and that's just be something you'd have to ask them, ask them about, um, 
it's just, it's just it's it's a curious thing. Um, and then you also have to yeah. look at another surprising one to me would be over in New Orleans, where I don't see Donk Bonkers on their roster this at all right at the moment. Oh yeah, for, I I saw him on my thing. I just forgot to mention. Yeah, that's really weird. Um. Yeah, some okay, some not... of the some of the top running backs are just have just have not either either not found a team they want to go to or they are disappearing or I'm not sure what it is. Might be something in the water. Just don't drink it anymore. Hey, down in Mexico City, I've learned that for a couple of years now. But <laughs> yeah, he's a. I mean, granted, he also was not very active. Like I had more just like hear his name in games and whatnot. Yep, I would never really see him in chat. So I don't know. Maybe it's another like similar situation between him and uh, and Eola. Some other guys who I think are like big er names who I'm surprised has not been uh, signed day one yet. Hunter Jones. Yeah. Surprised he hasn't really gone anywhere yet. I mean, he's the sort of guy where he's been active enough as to where I'm sure his signing will come through the pipeline in the next couple of days. Yeah, I believe um, so. I mean, you'll know more than I am. Uh, Franco Sonati, um, pretty decent guy up in Vancouver. Although, granted, there is a pretty big lang- language barrier between him and uh, most people he tried to communicate with. I can yeah. go further beyond that. Uh, I'm saying I feel like all the free agents at the moment. It's like, apart from the guys who are from Queen City who just haven't really been picked up by anybody because, you know, Eric Barkley has just kind of disappeared from existence at the moment. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what he has going on in his personal life um, at the moment, but I, I have heard that he's just been extremely busy. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping yeah. he's able to get everything kind of figured out for not only for him, for his team. And I mean, it, it sucks not being able to take care of your own, your stuff on your team. I know I know that much. Yeah. Also, uh, Mark Biddix, he hasn't been picked up by anybody. Oh yeah, I forgot he was over in Carolina, uh, or not over in Carolina. He was in Vancouver this last season. He was in Carolina the season yeah, think... before. Um, yeah, and and especially like with that right there, there's not too many teams left that need a quarterback at this point. Yeah, at, at, this, the... at this moment, I mean, Vancouver has Tom Pepper. Um, I don't, I haven't, don't remember seeing a quarterback for Tulsa. But that again, that's another one that I might have overlooked. Carolina needs a QB, so he might go back there. Yeah, Carolina needs a QB. Uh, Tulsa needs a QB. Uh, St. Louis needs a QB, but with the number one pick, I'm assuming they're going to go with the quarterback in the draft. Um, yeah, so La- Moody Mitchell, Indianapolis, most likely. Yeah, I, that, I mean, that seems to be the consensus, that it, it'll be Moody Mitchell um, having some experience in the league already as another player, um, being a Max Silver contract possibly um, definitely would be a yeah. good thing. Um, I'm yeah. trying to think. I, I don't believe he, Indianapolis actually has a quarterback lined up yet. Uh, James is having an owner create a player after his son, Leonidas. That's right. Okay. That That is correct. Yeah. Yeah, because I've been, like, scrolling through the rookie check-ins, and he's been kind of sorting himself out. Yes. I was talking to Ramos about this, like, the whole owner created player thing versus, like, going to the draft. They said just simply, it's like, you know – with this, I know there. I know who's gonna progress because oh, I don't know. I'm gonna be that guy. Yeah. As opposed to you know relying on some rookie who may or may not uh, who may or may really not care. lose interest, basically. Yeah, which is totally likely. With any, yes. With anybody. Yeah, I mean, um, it, you you have a couple of guys that come back after three or four seasons. You're you're almost guaranteed that they're gonna be there time in and time again. Um, but when you have a rookie that comes in, and the thing is, is like you get the off season, and they get their all their stuff up, and then they get all hyped out, and then the season starts, and then they just disappear. Um, I don't know if it's like they got on a team, and then and they feel like that's all they just needed to do, so they don't talk anymore. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but it it happened a lot over the last two seasons, um, where we had players that were super high in chat ranking during the off season as a rookie. And then they disappeared entirely. Yeah, I think even Scott LaRue, to a certain extent, was one of them. Although, I can't remember if he was a rookie. 
I don't remember off the top of my head if he was or not. I don't think so. But I know that he was like still a rather new guy to the SFL at the time. Uh, but then, like, strangely enough, once he's become head of stats, he's just kind of become like dead silent. Yeah, and he was well, a guy. Um, well, <laughs> at the moment, actually, he he stepped down and has actually removed himself from the league. Um, huh. Scott Scott Larue has. Um, I think he had some personal personal matters he had he had to attend to that he he wasn't going to have a player um, in season twelve. He was going to focus on head of stats um, position, but then I believe he had some personal matters that he had to had to attend to and had to step down and actually removed himself um, for the time being. Even from like the Discord and everything. Yeah, like he's he's no longer in the league. It feels weird, especially because like. He just won SFL Madness. Come yeah, on. I, I know. You... <laughs> At least let me give you your trophy. Well, you know, I mean, when something comes up, something comes up. Yeah. We, for the most part, try to respect that, unless we don't like you. Yeah. Oh, man. Rob Roby, where the hell are you? Where the hell are you? <laughs> He's doing a sim for his basketball <laughs> thing. So, but yeah, that that exists. We're not going to say anything about it because uh, we don't want to get in trouble I, for that. Yeah, no, <laughs> we so. we can't lose anybody, man. Well, so we got we got Rob who's supposed to be here and Ramos is supposed to be here, but both of them just kind of <laughs> kind of disappeared on us today. Yeah, so now you're hearing a conversation between between us. Mm, pretty much, basically, we, we, basically, you're getting it. What? We were we were looking at trying to fill some people, some short end people, shorthand people, and just couldn't couldn't quite find some people. So we're we're doing just the two of us today. <laughs> yes, isn't isn't life wonderful? That's all right. I don't I don't mind talking to you. We're talking football. Yeah. yeah. As you're currently sending stuff into SFL chat, uh, well, I found one that will work for the moment. Oh yeah, that was the free agency mm-hmm. thing. I was trying to find a free agency list. Yeah. I'll help out with seeing oh, who had what. Yeah. Also, I just realized Marty. Mc... Oh no, wait. Marty McCree is a rookie, I think. No, no Marty. Is... Marty McCree is not. Um, he was free safety for the Sharks last season. I thought he didn't play last year because I remember like he was going under like a different identity and all that sort of stuff. Nope. He he was. That's the same identity and everything. Yeah, because I remember, like, there was... Because I remember last year there was a bunch of stuff. Uh, so, but that's neither here nor there, and I well, think... Well, then also, looking at the free agents in the Discord, seeing Chappelle not actually signed to a team yet. I don't know if it's announced not or yet. Just a not announced not a one yet, or not, but... Seeing Chappelle not signed is another frank, another uh, surprising one to me, now that I look at it. He was one of the coordinators for Carolina last season. Yeah, well, you're the one... Oh, your microphone just went all out. Well, you're the one who knows the answer to that, not me. Well, I can't say anything either, but I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look through these hundreds of contracts I have in my DMs at the moment to find his. <laughs> it's just getting your DMs blown up. I it's it's a routine thing when it was re-signing period and the start of free agency that I would go home from work with over 100 notifications on my Discord. And you essentially just have to like blast through typing like I agree or whatever. Uh, well, more it's more of people laying out the contracts and then typing I agree, and then some of them had a question on certain things that they needed to clarify before they finished it. Yeah, that's that's the reason why I'm I like to consider myself rather simple. I just I just go with what Ramos tells me. I I send my equipment request to him, and then boom. One bar helmet. Don't well, get too ahead of yourself. Well, I'll say you, you and Ramos have it pretty well well figured out. It looks like then. So, yeah, but yeah, for for me, I know me. I was very particular when it came to sending in the re-signings and the contract talks to the new players or the returning players for Houston when I was over in Houston. Um, and I'm sure Andrew Rostelli, if you asked him this, the director of player personnel can really vouch for it. Where I 
I really went out all out and trying to make sure that I put everything in there perfectly so we didn't have to worry about adjusting ratings because the rating was wrong um, or adjusting different different equipment because we made sure to get all of that beforehand. Um, and I think out of, I only had one player out of the 12 that we signed that had an, uh, something with their equipment that they forgot to add into there, which I think was uh, like I have full sleeves instead of half sleeves or something like that. Yeah, I rocked full sleeves last season. That didn't work. I also rocked a two-bar face mask, which, let's think about it like this. Two bars, I got the second most amount of tackles in the SFL. Now they're moving down to one bar. Well, you, you got the second most <laughs> technically. I'm like, you had a tie for first, so it was you were third technically. I'm, I'm going to keep I'm knocking cur- you down here. I'm, I'm gonna keep. I'm, I'm currently queuing. I'm currently <laughs> queuing the uh, the Ramos <laughs> command right now. So doing the chin scratch. There you go. Yeah, but on that chin scratching note, that right there wraps up the first part of the off season here on the SFL podcast, presented to you by APM Music through the power of YouTube. Along with you, know what? Let's give a shout out to our friends over at Fuel. I am Jack Brown, alongside. Here we have Ryan Karpinski saying so long and have a great weekend full of football action.